How's it going, Reefers? Today is part two of the Calc Wasser series, How to Dose Calc Wasser and Its Misconception. A link will be down in the description below if you missed part one to this series. Now that we know what Calc Wasser is and what it does, how can we use it? You could use it to be a main alkalinity and calcium supplement if alkalinity is what you care about, or you could use it to drop pH to astonishing numbers. I guess you could also always throw in your ATO and claim it's for beginners. Calcwasser truly is an amazing product though. Back in the day it used to be your worst enemy in your ATO when it would stick on and dump an entire five gallon bucket inside your tank, but by today's standards it's really my best friend because we have modern equipment and that just doesn't really happen anymore. Tupar came onto the market and it was supposed to be the problem solver, but we've seen plenty of tanks get overdosed with soda ash too when the dosing pump still sticks on. That is also not a thing anymore because we don't use timers. Only problem with that is the old calc issues people have had to this day can still nuke your tank with soda ash 100% and there is no limitation for calc wasser at a hobbyist level. Modern equipment however is why you don't see tanks nuked every week from overdosing it. It still happens, it's just not as common. That's why I prefer to use an Apex. Not only do I trust its controllability, I go an extra mile and add my own fail safes to it. The most common fail safe you'll find is a standalone pH controller that powers your dosing pump. Not control, but just supply power to the unit. It's pretty affordable if a full-blown controller isn't in your budget. I wouldn't dose calc without a means of monitoring pH. That's the whole reason we're using it. We care about our pH, so dosing something to fix an issue but not monitor the results just doesn't make sense in 2022. So let's talk about how we can implement this magic elixir without going totally blind like I had to in the beginning. Hamsasreef.com is key for this, and a link to the page will be in the description below. If your tank is fresh off the start and only has an alkalinity consumption of 2 or sorry, 0.2 dKH in 24 hours, that's not a problem. It's also not a problem if you have a 2.0 dKH drop in 24 hours, like I do. That's where we all start. It's not just for pros, but that is for the next video. And here goes the website right here, hamsasreef.com. This thing is super old and a lot of old school guys know about it. But you can use this for more than just calc wasser, but I'm going to show you how we use this one. So you go up here to the top right corner, click calculators. You're going to go over here to calcium and alkalinity. All the way down to the bottom, Calc Contribution Calculator. So there's a couple things you need to pay attention on here, but it's super easy. So right here, you get CaOH and CaO by mass or volume for both. CaO is calcium oxide. Let's make sure we use calcium hydroxide, even though some stuff doesn't really change out. But by mass and by volume, mass is by weight. Right here, you see grams. And volume is for you teaspoon dickheads. So we're going to go up here by mass because that's how I always do it. I don't measure this anymore, but full concentration is going to be six grams per one gallon of water. You can just use ambient room temperature for this. My garage averages 80 degrees, so we're just going to go with that. You can ignore all of this down here. We're going to go straight over here to calc solution addition rate. Now, for us that we don't know where we really need to be, we're just going to go in blindly and just guess. So you've heard of people starting out calc wasser dosing 500 mils a day when they have a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 dKH drop. We'll just start with that and see what happens. Except you need to make sure it's in milliliters. One time per day is how we're going to do this. And my tank, let's just say, is 100 gallons. And we'll see what that does. Before you hit calculate, scroll down here, go to alkalinity contribution, and change it to dKH from milli equivalents per liter. And now we can just hit calculate and see what happens. So it shows us over here that we're 100% saturation at 6 grams per gallon at 80 degrees. And I'll show you real quick, like it changes some, but not by much. So my garage averages 80, so we go with 80. And now you can see there's this much alkalinity in the solution, this much calcium, blah, blah, blah. We don't care. There's 0.11 grams of undissolved calc in the bottom. So we're going to ignore all this right here and come straight over here. Calcium contribution, 1.1 parts per million per day. We don't really care about that. We're just looking for alkalinity. So alkalinity contribution is 0.16 dKH a day. Now for me, let's just say that that's not enough for my 100 gallon tank. We're close, but we need to be at 0.2. So let's just throw another 100 mils at it and see what happens. What we get? 0.19. We're like, oh, we're super close. Let's throw just a little bit more in there. Boom, 0.2. So 
So that's how you figure that out. It's extremely simple. Be mindful of this calculator though. It's not the end all be all. It's just gonna get us really close. So to go ahead and get it out of the way, if you're an advanced reefer with a decent alkalinity consumption that's wanting to boost your pH, use this calculator and figure out your dose amount and dose that while your lights are off. It's that simple. Dosing all your calc at night is where the alkalinity spike comes into play that everyone swears will kill your tank. Sure, a 3.0 DKH spike in a few minutes might do that, but gradual over 12 hours or so, it's totally fine. What you need to pay attention to, though, is your pH. You don't want it to skyrocket over 8.3 if you ride much lower than that. You need to ease into the pH increase. Personally, don't give a rat's tail about your alkalinity and shoot for a 0.2 rise in your pH low point, which is when your lights are off for the longest period of time. If you ride at 8.0 pH at night, have it shut down at 8.2. If your low point is 8.2, be more conservative, conservative and shoot for a low point of 8.3 instead of 8.4. The reason is your alkalinity consumption will greatly increase at 8.3 plus pH. When you wake up in the morning and you test your alkalinity and it's lower than your liking, you can just use your soda ash to make the needed correction to put it where it normally would be at that specific time of the day and start ramping up your calc dosing at night. If you have an insanely packed tank eating up 3 DKH in a day, you would want to figure out what your tank eats up overnight. Pretty simple, just turn off your dosing pumps for that duration, no harm, no foul, correct it in the morning. In that case, I would only match the alkalinity consumption at night with Kalkwasser instead of the entire 24 hour consumption and continue to daily dose during the day. That's because you dose that much calc in 12 hours or so, you're going straight to 8.7, buddy. And that overnight is not ideal. During the photo period, if you were to lose too much alkalinity for your liking, you could simply just correct it with soda ash. Now, what I recommend for the early on beginner with that 0.2 DKH consumption is half strength solution, which is a mix of three grams per gallon of calc wasser. So in order to achieve that, just one gallon of water, three grams of calc. It's pretty simple. And that should be dosed over a 24 seven schedule, not just at night. You're in the beginning, so you don't want to get too crazy with it. And the only exception to not having a pH controller is if you're using that half strength solution, it's almost impossible to nuke your tank with modern equipment doing that. So your time for a controller will soon come and that's when it gets really fun. Quick rule of thumb though for my full strength users, if you have powder settled at the bottom of your containers, you're at full strength. You don't have to measure it anymore. And that slurry that's at the bottom of your container, do not throw it away. Just mix right back on top of it. It's undissolved product. Don't throw away your money. It also saves you time from not cleaning that thing out and you can go about your day. Now that we have the power of hydroxides flowing through our tank's veins, there really is no intermediate level to this. You're just slowly upping your dosage to meet your newfound alk demand because with a pH increase, it will also increase your alkalinity demand. When it comes time to change over to full strength for the half strength users, don't try anything like three quarter strength. Just go full full strength solution at six grams per gallon. Take what you were dosing, cut it in half, and then adjust from there. That concludes our video for how to dose Calquasser. Our next episode will be pro tips for dosing.